I was amazed at the sheer madness you talked about. Poster sessions jammed in like sardines, waiting lists to get into conferences, thousands of paper submissions with not enough reviewers. I know, it can feel really overwhelming. Hi, I'm Norman Sue. I do research in human-computer interaction. And I'm David Crandall, and I work in computer vision. We're professors at Indiana University. This paper was inspired by talking to people at CVPR, hearing about both the excitement and frustration of working in computer vision. Norman, do you remember how this turned into a research paper? So I remember us discussing late one night at a local restaurant. How has the growth of computer vision emotionally affected individuals in the community? We often think of technology as not having emotions, but emotions drive us and point to what is possible. So by examining what people in computer vision are feeling, we can see what people feel they can and cannot do. David, has that been investigated before? I don't think so. That's why I was so excited to team up with an ethnographer like you. So we took a qualitative approach, which is well suited for identifying the how and why behind phenomena. In this case, how people are emotionally responding to computer vision's growth. Because of the pandemic, we did this asynchronously. We asked computer vision academics and professionals to write a nonfiction story involving recent changes in vision and depicting an emotional event. Yep, in the end, 56 people wrote stories. 66% were academics and 38% were professionals. And the stories were just so interesting that we decided to write a paper for CVPR to have a direct impact on the vision community. So what did the study reveal, Norman? Well, we found that people are experiencing a wide range of emotions. Folks are excited living through the deep learning revolution that changed everything. Here's one story about the power of deep learning. Around 2014, a student was working on a problem that their advisor thought was difficult. They recalled, 30 minutes later, we had results that outperformed the prior model by 10 to 20 percent. I remember bouncing back into my advisor's office with a silly grin. And overall, people felt the prestige and popularity of computer vision had opened new doors for them. Students now decide among multiple prestigious internship offers. Despite these successes, though, Norman, about 80% of our stories depicted negative feelings. Right. Deep learning has upended computer vision. People feel that they are engineering the black box instead of investigating deeper questions like perception and cognition. One senior researcher was surprised that a student poster presenter didn't know about their work on the topic. The student smugly said, I don't read any paper before 2015. The senior researcher felt deflated. Wow. Other stories talked of the rising role of industry in computer vision. A striking story came from a student whose advisor receives a lot of industry funding. They wrote, everyone in the lab is assigned to work at a company for funding, and these companies make us work hard. This would be fine if what we were doing was research, but it is not. I learned that most students hated their company research. I remember that story too. They felt demoralized because that's not why they went to grad school. Many stories touch upon implications of computer vision. One student colorfully said that he could no longer be a, quote, simple happy nerd, an ostrich researcher hiding my head in the sand and blame others for the misuse of technology. Yeah, there seems to be a realization that we can't just hope that someone else will worry about the social implications of vision. Some of the most upsetting stories were about isolation. One student recounted feeling energized by talks at women in machine learning and queer in AI workshops. But her conference roommate asked, why are you wasting your time with these workshops instead of going to the core conference talks? She was hurt and felt that the topics of these workshops shouldn't be sidelined. Here's another example of feeling sidelined. A professor talked about heartbreak. He returned to CVPR after several years of focusing on teaching. He said, I tried to talk to presenters, but it was clear that I did not have any insights to offer in return. They moved on and talked to others. I haven't returned to CVPR since. So David, what are the main takeaways of this study? Well, our goal was to uncover how people are really feeling if you give them a chance to share confidentially. Overall, we found that the rise of deep learning has tracked with the success of vision, but also feelings of isolation and marginalization. Also, there seemed to be a feeling that hyper-focus on quantitative metrics and benchmarks might be detrimental. Maybe this could be an opportunity to accept and expand qualitative metrics in computer vision? Yes. For example, instead of relying only on quantitative benchmarks, you might try deploying algorithms in the wild and qualitatively evaluate their effects. And we haven't spoken to enough people in underrepresented populations. A future paper should address this limitation. Overall, our findings suggest we need to foster an environment in computer vision more inclusive of those who feel marginalized. Thank you all for listening. Our participants shared so many other interesting stories, so we hope you'll check out our full paper.